All right, I know that so many YouTubers are talking about metaverse, decentralized sandbox. Everyone tells you that you have to participate because this is the future and they might be right to some point. But when it comes to virtual land, it is not really the case that you have to hurry and buy some land, especially on decentralized land, because there is one thing that stopped me from buying land on Decentraland and today I will share what it is. I will explain how exactly you can do your math and I pretty much believe I would save you about $20,000 because this is how much a single parcel in Decentraland costs nowadays. So if you're ready, let's go through it. There is no doubt that Decentraland is one of the best metaverses you can have nowadays. And it is a place where people are selling and trading NFTs. And the one type of NFT that costs a lot is the virtual land. So just like in the real world, there is scarcity and there is a limited number of lands that are available on Decentraland. Many have bought before mana went over $1 and they succeeded to buy some land on a cheaper price. But now it is quite expensive, honestly. A single parcel on Decentraland is more than $20,000, especially the ones that are close to the center and you will need to spend some mana for it. And I'm pretty sure that many of you have a clear idea what to do with it. For example, if you're an artist who is launching an NFT project, it is great to have a gallery in Decentraland or Sandbox or any other metaverse. And there you can expose your NFT pieces and this way you can sell it to the world, right? But there is one thing you need to bear in mind. The size. When you visit the marketplace, you will notice that there are those tiny small squares which are considered to be one piece of parcel. And one parcel nowadays costs somewhere between $15,000 to $20,000, $25,000. Those that are closer to the center are more expensive. And you might say, yeah, but this is a map. When you jump in, everything is huge. But that's not really the case. If I pick randomly one parcel in Decentraland that is for sale, and I jump to the place, you will see that this actually is a very small piece of land. And it's not really a lot that you can do on that parcel. So those huge experiences that we see are usually built on 6, 12, 15, or even more pieces of land. If you look at the Decentraland University, for example, you will see that it is a combination of many parcels. And if you want to have a square five by five on Decentraland, that would mean 25 parcels. An average price of $20,000 means that you will have to spend five hundred thousand dollars or that's half a million dollars if you wish 50 parcels i will round it to one million dollars it's a huge investment for someone like me of course if you are an seo of a gaming company and you want to put a lot of your budget into that then it will make sense but when it comes to an individual with no idea or some nft collection and you're thinking to boost the project on a virtual land, that is all right, but keep in mind that you will spend a lot of money for a very small piece of land. And that's understandable because there is scarcity, there is a limited number of parcels that will be sold eventually, and obviously when all of them are sold, then probably the price will start to increase, just like with the Bitcoin, when all 21 million coins are mined, we will see bigger demand because we know the limitation is reached, there will be no more Bitcoins to mine, and the people will want more and more piece of a Bitcoin. And it's the very same thing with a virtual land. Once all parcels are sold out, the demand will increase because there will be no supply, except the people who have bought previously for investment purposes and they are trying to resell those virtual lands on a higher price for profit. And this makes sense. If you wanna buy a small piece of land, even one parcel, hold it with ears with the hope that it will increase in time and 
someone eventually will purchase it on a higher price, that is your decision. But there is one more thing that you have to consider. When playing a metaverse, you can jump from one spot to another. You don't need to walk, you don't need to travel. You can just pick a random place from the map and move your avatar in there. However, the business or the experience can do the very same thing. Meaning that if you purchase one parcel, because it is close to a famous experience, it might turn that after some time this experience is not in your neighborhood anymore. They might decide to move their business on another spot. So there is no guarantee that your surroundings will be the same in time. Third thing you might be worried about is that those empty parcels around your spot might remain empty for quite a long time. People are purchasing virtual land on Decentraland and Sandbox because they want to have it as an investment in their wallet, as an NFT that they will hold because they don't have an idea what to do with that virtual piece of land. They don't have an NFT project to launch or build a gallery where they will expose it to the people. They cannot develop a game and charge the players or have live events and concerts in there. So these parts might just remain empty without any attraction. And you know what will happen in there? You will just walk around and nobody will be in your neighborhood. Even you build your experience, if everything around you is empty, nobody will be there to visit unless you have a very good marketing, you're promoting your event and the people are just jumping straight to your event. And if the three things that I've mentioned don't bother you, then you can just spend your money for virtual land on decentral land. And this might turn out to be a great investment over time because the metaverse is expanding, the tokens are rising in value. More and more people are talking about metaverse and I'm pretty sure that the younger generation will be more and more involved and one day it might turn out that it is better for you to purchase a virtual land on Decentraland for your kids rather than an actual land where they will be living. But who knows about that, time will show. However, if you are worried about the size of the virtual land on Decentraland, you should check out Sandbox Virtual Land and I have described it in details in another video, so go for it right now and you will learn why Sandbox Virtual Land is the better choice according to me. Thanks for watching, I appreciate you staying until the end with me and I will see you soon.